Okay, so today we are going to do the, the notes for the compensator design. That is the fifth module in your study guide. And if you can have a look, it will be a combination of the seventh chapter, steady state errors, and the ninth chapter, which is designed via root lockers in your textbook, right? So this is mostly a chapter which has got derivations and some theory and a bit of calculations as well, right? So <clears throat> to start off with, you're looking at the chapter 7 in your textbook which it talks about steady state error. So there are two differentiations that you need to, sorry, derivations that you need to learn here. The first is how to calculate the steady state error in terms of the closed loop transfer function T of S. That is described here. It's a very simple process. It's very step by step. Once you reach uh, a certain point, that is, if you describe the error in terms of the closed loop transfer function, then you apply what is called the final value theorem. And based on the final value theorem, you will then receive your answer. So with regards to a closed loop transfer function, the error is limit s tending to 0 s into R of s into 1 minus T of s, where R of s is the input and T of s is the closed loop transfer function. So this is the general formula. So now when you are asked to find the final value or the error for a system for a uh, step input, then you substitute R of s is equal to 1 by s. If it's a ramp input, you substitute 1 by s squared. So there are two ways in which the problems can be asked. One can be the derivation and the other can be uh, an actual problem where you're given values that you need to solve. Now this is a question that has been done in this slide. You can see here, find the steady state error for the system if the closed loop transfer function is given as this equation here and the input is a unit step. So everything is given to you you write down the, the general formula and then you substitute the values. Here it is, 1 by s and here is the t of s. And once you've done that, you apply limit. So when you apply the limits, you will get the answer and that is your final answer. Then we go on to calculating the steady state error in terms of GFS. Now the only difference here from the previous one is that you're using the open loop transfer function GFS. So again, you do the derivation and the derivation results in an equation like this and once you have that equation you substitute for R of S and this is what we have done here we have substituted for R of S on each step of the way and in doing so we get generic equations so here is the error for a step input here is the error for a ramp input and here is the error for a parabolic input. So these derivations become quite easy once you learn that process. Once again, I've done a problem here where now we are given G of S and I'm supposed to find the steady state errors for three inputs here. 5 into U of T, 5 into T U of T and 5 into T square U of T. So U of T stands for a step input T into U of T stands for a ramp input and T square into U of T stands for a uh, parabolic input. So if it is a step input, it is 5 by S. If it is a ramp input, it is 5 by S squared. Now if you take 5 T square into U of T and if it's a parabolic input, if you apply the Laplace theorem, you will see that it becomes 10 by S cube. So, it's a matter of applying the Laplace transform to the input to calculate your values. And based on that, you can then do the calculations. Here is a problem that you can try for yourself, uh, which, can give, which is similar to what has been done here. Then we go on to the static error constants and the system type. So the static error constants are derived from the steady state error. So there are three types of static error constants. It is your position constant KP, your velocity constant KV, 
and your acceleration constant Ka. Now the position constant Kp is linked to a step input while the velocity constant is linked to a ramp input and the acceleration constant is linked to the parabolic input. So if you have a close look here, what they've done is the position constant is taken as limit s tending to 0 g of s. The velocity constant is limit s tending to 0 s into g of s and the acceleration constant is limit s tending to 0 s squared into g of s. So kp, kb and ka. So based on this you can rewrite the steady state error formulas as 1 divided by 1 plus kp, 1 divided by kb and 1 divided by ka. So here is a problem which looks at that. So the question here is stemming from this open loop transfer function g of s and the question is evaluate the static error constants for a standard step ramp and parabolic input. So firstly you need to calculate the static error constant so that is kp, kv and ka. Right? Now if you calculate kp you will find that it is equal to 5.21 in this instance and kv and ka are equal to 0. Based on that you can calculate the value of the error which is e of phi infinity of s and you will see that it is a finite value. So you can calculate these values. Similarly you can do that for each one of these experiments or uh, these questions here. Now we go on to the system type. So the system type is defined as the number of zero poles at the origin, right? So if you have a look at this question here, it is a type zero system because there are no poles at the origin here. While if you go to this question here, this is called a type one system. Why? Because it has got one pole at the origin. And then you have something called the type 2 system because it's got two poles at the origin. So that is how the system type is defined. The system type is defined by looking at the number of poles at the origin. Now based on the system type, you can make some comments about the steady state error of a system. So this is a table which summarizes the steady state error as well as the static error constant for our system. So for a step input the steady state error formula is 1 divided by 1 plus kp and in that case kp is equal to a constant. This is something that we have learned when we solve the question there. And therefore the error will be a finite value which is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus kp. Now the minute you make it into a type 1 system you will see that kp becomes infinity and when kp is infinity you will see that 1 divided by 1 plus infinity is equal to 0. The same is for type 2. Similarly you can look at the impact of this system type on the ramp and the parabolic input. Right. Now here is a question here, given the system, or not a question, it's a definition, we define the system type to be the value of n in the denominator or equivalently the equal number of pure integrators in the forward path. So a pure integrator is another way of saying a pole at the origin. So you can see here, they have generalized it and said that this is s raised to n. So if n is equal to 0, it's a type 0 system. If n is equal to 1, it's a type 1. And if n is equal to 2, it's a type 2 system. Similarly, you can see a problem that has been done here, where a unity feedback system has the following transfer function. Evaluate kp, kb, and ka. So we know the formulas for calculating kp, kb, and ka. Now based on this system, you can see that this is a type 0 system because there are no poles at the origin. So if you look at this, 
equation here. This is the criteria that you're going to follow. So immediately you can see that Kp is going to be a constant value, Kb is going to be a zero and Ka is going to be a zero. Which means that the error will only be valid for a step input while the others are infinite. So rather than making tedious calculations, you will know that it is only Kp and the error that you need to calculate. The remaining factors will be zeros and the error will be infinity. Similarly, there is a question like this which says that if a system has got a specification where kb is equal to a thousand, we can draw several conclusions. So what are those conclusions? These conclusions are directly derived from this table that we have here. So you can have a look at the table and you can also see what are the conclusions that we can draw there. Then uh, gain designed to meet a steady state error specification. So here it says that given a control system in figure 7.1 has the value of k at 10% error in the steady state, they want us to calculate the, the value of uh, k which is going to give stability. So from this question you can see that this is a type 1 system. So when it's a type 1 system, naturally we are going to go on to looking at the value of kv, right? And this is where our calculations are going to start. So it's a type 1 system, 1 by kv. And they say that 1 by kv is equal to 10%. That is the error. So 1 by kv is equal to 0, 0,1. Now based on this, kv is equal to 10. Now you're going to do a reverse formula. Till this time you were able, you were asked to find what is the value of kv. But now you've got the value of kv and you need to substitute it back into the equation. And you will see that on calculation you will get k as equal to 672. From here we go on to a bit of a theory that is compensators. This is now in chapter 9. There are two types of compensators being ideal and non-ideal. What are the differences between the two? That is what is discussed here, right? And then we go on to looking at the, the description of the, the poles. So this is a question that is uh, asked in lag compensator design. That is example 9.1 in your textbook that is shown here right there are two types of uh, compensators they are your ideal compensators are split into your pi and your pd right pi is the one that solves for steady state error while pd is the one that solves for transient response now similarly in the non ideal you have something that is called the lag compensator and the lead compensator the lag compensator solves for steady state while the lead compensator uh, solves for uh, transient response. A combination of an ideal compensator is called a PID compensator and a combination of non-ideal compensators is called a lag lead compensator. So here is that problem. It says compensate for the system in figure 9.4a which is this one here and where whose root, root locus is shown in figure 9.5 to improve the steady state by a factor of 10. So what happens here in this question is that you will be given all the values. In fact, everything that is given in red here indicates the things that you are given, right? So you are given the value of 2 and you are given the value of the uncompensated error and you are also given the uncompensated gain. Now the formula that we use here is uh, Kp, the formula for finding Kp, we know that error is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus Kp. So from this equation, Kp is equal to 1 minus E of infinity divided by E of infinity. Right? From this value, we can find that the compensated error is going to be 0, 0,0108. Okay? Now, why do they divide by 10 here? Because the question says that you need to reduce the error by a factor of 10. Okay, So 
you've got the compensated error and the question gives you the uncompensated error which is 0, 0,108. So if you have the uncompensated error and the compensated error, you can actually find the compensated gain. So from this formula, you're going to find what is the compensated gain. So this is going to be 91.59. Now the uncompensated gain, which is given as 8.23, with this formula, what you're going to do is you're going to go on to the next step where you're going to actually solve so in a lag compensated design what's going to happen is you're going to take the ratio between the compensated gain and the uncompensated gain the uncompensated gain we calculated as 8.23 the compensator gain is equal to 91.59 so when we calculate that we get 11,13 that 11,13 is applied as the ratio between the compensator 0 and the compensator pole. The compensator pole is assumed as 0, 0,01 which is standard. We do that in all cases and based on that we calculate the value of the compensator 0, Zc. So you will find it here. Now in the end what you do is that if you have a look at the question that we started off with, this was the plant that was given to us. It had a problem that the error, it had a very high error and it needed to be reduced by a factor of 10. So after doing our calculations, we are now stating that if you add a compensator with a 0 at 0, 0,11 and a pole at 0, 0,01, to this system you will be reducing the error by 10 percent and where do we get these values we have calculated the value of the compensator zero we are assuming the value of the compensator pole and this is this ratio is taken as the ratio of the uncompensated uncom gain divided by the uncompensated gain and this is equal to zc divided by pc right so final part in this uh, uh, chapter, we look at lag lead compensator design as well as PID comp controller design. So these are the two factors that are involved in the design. That is a theoretical question there. Another factor that you need to look into is how do you calculate for disturbances? So very often you will see that you have a system which has got a disturbance. So how do you now calculate for the disturbance of that system? So here is that formula. You will see that there is a system here. This is the system's total error. That is the formula that is given here. E of infinity is equal to this value. And then you've got this factor here, which is the disturbance specifically. So this is a question with regards to the disturbance. And it is also, there is also a problem that is done here which solves this question that is given there. So you can have a try at that and uh, see how that will work for you. Once again, just a summary of the ideal and non-ideal compensators with uh, some criteria that is indicated in red here. So this is how this chapter works. So there is a combination of uh, some derivations, some calculations and some theory. So please do have a look at it and uh, let me know if there is something we can do. Okay. Enjoy. Thank you.